Unfortunately, none of the stadium had windows in it except Rebecca's office, um, which is a nightmare for a, for a cinematographer. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. How did that uh, do you think that if you were involved earlier in the production design, you would have said, you know what, maybe put a window in there. <laughs> it you know, could help me a lot. Such a hard time. Such a hard time. Why is there no windows here? But then, you know, he took me around painstakingly to so many locker rooms of all the Premier League. You know, there are, ne- there are no windows there. Of course, there's no windows there. So it was that in a safe DP in me wanted to sort of you know, just make it easier for myself, I suppose. And also windows just give you uh, so many more lighting options. Uh, when you have top lit uh, for some of the cast as well, it's just h- harder. Um, so it meant along with the gaffer, we we made a quite a sort of complicated lighting rig um, that had lots of panels in the ceiling that we could individually turn uh, each one off. We could change the color temperature um, and it allowed us a lot of control actually. And also we just made the ceiling a feature. Um, it was great, low angle shot, ceiling looks great so but yes i initially did curse him but afterwards um just got used to it uh yeah and i think you're right i mean certainly you both must have seen tons of references of what these rooms actually look like and when you're watching the show you really need to know where you are you need to feel like you're in an accurate representation of where you are so i mean yes but that's a huge challenge. We were talking to um, the DP of Ma Rainey's uh, Black Bottom a oh, yeah. few couple of months ago. And I don't know if you've seen that film, but a lot of it takes place yeah. in like a basement. And all yeah. they yeah. had is just a little crevice window up in the top. So I-, I find it interesting when you have to work without windows because now you're bound to what is practically in the space. Absolutely. So wh- how did you overcome those challenges? And what did you do? Well, as I said, the lighting design uh, was a big thing by able to control the actual ceiling. We put as many, we, we, we put Ted's office was uh, between the locker room uh, and a sort of training area behind. That gave through views. It meant there could be uh, sconce lights on the walls. You're always looking for some sort of source of light that you can, you can, you can use as a bokeh in the background uh, or just as a highlight, really. So yeah. it was very important for me, and I worked with Paul, the designer, to put some of these lights at sort of eye level around. Um, and otherwise, it was just uh, sort of using the motivation of that top light, but then bending the laws of physics and just trying not to light everyone uh, with dark eyes and just using lamps on the ground uh, when we could, uh, trying to get as good modeling as possible. But the whole thing about those scenes in the locker room, it's often big groups of players. You don't want lamps on the floor. You do want to be able to use uh, lights from above. And actually, uh, unlike a window, it probably allowed us to shoot those scenes much more easily. Now, when you're going in for close-ups in these situations where you can hide a lamp in the ground or underneath the frame, um, do you often choose an actual light source or do you like to go in there with bounce cards? What do you typically like to do? Yep. No, I dive straight in there with a big frame and a lamp, not dissimilar um, to the one in the ceiling, just uh, on a stand that we can move quite quickly. We can then dim down very quickly with a with a map we've got of every single light, uh, the ones above their head, and we push in from the side. Very easy for a close up, just to, with the bigger groups of players. You can be rumbled very quickly as the one of the players is hit pretty hard by one, and you know everyone else falls in its shadow, and you can see the source. So it actually looked better and more realistic having the top light for medium wide shots because I initially started trying to push light in from the sides even for those. And it just didn't look right. A locker room doesn't, doesn't have light like that. So sometimes actually things look better by being truer to the, to the, to the room you're trying to light um, and not trying to cheat too much. I'm personally, I haven't directed or shot much comedy work. I do mostly commercials and certainly we've done some stuff that that's like silly and goofy and funny, but certainly wouldn't like call myself a comedy director. It's a very specific special skill, but I do know from my own personal experiences that generally what we try to do is to light the scene in a way where the talent can just kind of go with it, like lighting so that you're almost able to do, almost able to shoot from anywhere because the talent's only going to give you so many fresh performances that feel right and that have that comedic timing. It's like, I feel like in drama, yeah, you still need to be fresh, obviously, but like in comedy, you really need that first reaction freshness Mm -hmm. And you can't necessarily go back and shoot retakes a million times because you kind of lose that. Do you feel, working on something like Ted Lasso, are you thinking about that as well? 
Yes, but you know, very quickly it that it didn't become an issue because I mean, I guess scenes that are highly emotional as well, you could say the same. You want to put five cameras on them and you know make sure you don't miss that uh, tear rolling down the cheek. Mm. But actually, yeah. Uh, you know, particularly with this, this group of actors, you know, Jason would be able to do the same performance five times from five different angles and five different lighting setups. So, no, we, we didn't approach it in that way. We approached it just like we would a drama. And, you know, and I think that was led by the actors. They, they, were, they were comfortable with that. I think it would have changed if they'd said, I've got one in me uh, and it's got to be the first shot. But Jason's nearly the opposite. He likes to get into it to for us to shoot sometimes the uh, the other actors first and then fi- end on him so he's sort of nearly tweaked what he's going to say some of the some of the gags sometimes he sort of improvises to himself uh, and then for his the shot on him he'll he'll be ready for it 